This is Lugodowski of WeAreChanged.org, and I'm here with Greg Pallast of GregPallast.com, investigative journalist who recently uncovered a memo that's really going to shake up the seat of the next Federal Reserve Chairman. Greg, can you tell us what you found? Uh, pretty nasty stuff. A memo written to Larry Summers, who's Obama's choice or leading choice for head of the Federal Reserve Board to replace Ben Bernanke. In this memo, it uh, references Summers having a series of secret illegal meetings with the heads of the CEOs of the big five banks in America, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, Citibank. Uh, and uh, in this memo, it's clear that Summers is having secret and therefore illegal meetings with bankers to determine what United States economic policy should be worldwide and basically it's like the mob uh, meeting with the police chief and deciding you know what the police rules ought to be wow. I mean that's just incredible how were you able to get your hands on this memo and were you able to verify it uh, how I got my hands on the memo a little birdie came by and dropped it on me and I don't remember his name I or her. Know now. <laughs> and either do I given what's happened to uh, uh, other journalists uh, I have yeah. to be careful about this it is a, it is a confidential diplomatic message uh, from uh, the within the State Department and Treasury Department so I'm not supposed to have it needless to say how did I verify it several ways one it had the private phone numbers of these top bankers so I called one but I had to say who I was uh, under BBC rules it wasn't Larry uh, Summers so it was click but I actually got to the chief the the chairman of the board of Citibank no secretaries nothing so it was legit inside numbers yeah. second I flew to Geneva, Switzerland, and met with the head of the World Trade Organization because the core part of this memo was how to force other nations to join America and jumping off the bank deregulation cliff. This was serious stuff. The international financial system completely collapsed, and this memo uh, was at, at the heart of it. And so I met with the head of the WTO, and he says, uh, uh, Pascal Amy, oh, Monsieur Ballist, uh, we don't... Uh, have evil cabals of bankers determining uh, our policy here at the WTO. And then I showed him the memo, he says, oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, so, uh, so I confirmed it there. Then I, uh, uh, one of the nations, a na uh, in, in addition to the United States, which fell to its knees, the rest of the planet, including, uh, for example, Ecuador, which uh, was um, forced to accept toxic assets, toxic derivatives. In other words, if they want to sell us our bananas, their goods, we had to, they had to accept our bads, our derivatives and all this financial junk, which ultimately destroyed the economy of Ecuador. So because I had these documents, I flew to Quito, Ecuador, met with the president, Rafael Correa, who confirmed that, yeah, they did muscle him, that this, this is the real thing. He didn't know about that memo. He knew the effect of the memo and what Summers did to him and his nation. Um, and so he, he had suspected that, that there was such a plan, and so this confirmed it. Yeah. I then also spoke with a member of Bill Clinton's cabinet who was with Summers. Um, that is Joe Stiglitz, who, had won the, who later won the Nobel Prize in economics. And he said he would sit in cabinet meetings with Larry Summers, and Summers would turn to Robert Rubin, then Secretary of the Treasury before Summers. Summers would turn to Rubin and say, whenever a policy matter came up, well, what would Goldman think of this? Well, how would Goldman feel about that? And finally Stiglitz said, you know, we're in the West Wing, you know. Um, you know, President Bartlett doesn't talk like this. I mean, uh, why, what do we care what Goldman thinks? Don't you think that's inappropriate? Shouldn't it be what, what's best for the American people? And they looked at him like he was, you know, just fell off a watermelon truck. So the result was that they uh, dumped Stiglitz out of the cabinet Larry Summers was raised to Secretary of Treasury under Clinton and then became economics czar under Obama uh, at the demand of the big banks, including Robert Rubin uh, of Citibank and Goldman Sachs. And so what we see here with the uh, possible, probable appointment of Larry Summers as head of the Federal Reserve Board is the bankers choosing their boy. It's not that Obama's choosing Summers. Summers is choosing Obama. The banks have chosen Summers for Obama. That's what we're seeing. And if you look at this memo, 
it like I, you know I've said it's a it's a conspiracy nuts wet dream because you know you people have said oh the bankers and the and the treasury guys all get together and this evil cabal to determine our room, you yeah. know they in a secret room and they and they come up with the new laws and they they're the ones that tore apart financial deregulation regulations and sure enough there's the actual memo the phone numbers the meeting notes wow. and I have several other documents too by the way but you know to me Stiglitz saying yeah this is the type of thing that they would do they would sit there and say what would Goldman think they didn't take a chance they would yeah. call up Goldman and ask so this is pure evidence of collusion insider trading of the largest companies coming together with the government and buying off the government for their own personal benefit and against the benefit of everybody else is that correct well yeah what unfortunately the effect of this is is horrific which is that the decriminalizing of the banking system led to massive massive unemployment in the United States destruction in Europe still feeling being felt part of this deal in this memo was to allow the trade in uh, foreign currency derivatives this is what sank uh, the Greek government you have 27 percent unemployment there uh, the world has fallen on its face and never recovered and that's a great extent because of Larry Summers playing secret games with the banks and um, like I say it's you can't do that they could uh, by the way the Secretary of the Treasury can meet with any damn banker they want. The, the thing is, they can't do it in secret. They can't have secret phone calls without telling us that they've done it yeah. and its purpose. And because other these guys are making billions off this inside information and off the deals that allowed them to make billions at our expense. If, if look, it's not a victimless crime. Billionaire bankers are not victimless criminals. Believe me. Now, if, if we had a just legal system, what would be the larger implications of this memo? Well, number one, if we had a just system, instead of rewarding Larry Summers with the position of head of the Federal Reserve Board, he would be banned from government positions forever. He violated the rules of open government. We have laws in the United States. We were supposed to be a nation of laws. I just heard the President of the United States talk about, you know, international law and the rule of law. And I, and I agree with him. It's very important. So then how come he's uh, appointing a lawbreaker is head of the Federal Reserve Board. This is very serious stuff. We have open government for a reason. They're not supposed to be secret. The other thing is that, you yeah, understand, these banks made billions off these deals. They should, they should divulge up that money that they got from the inside deals that they got through Larry Summers. That's our money. You have to understand that one of the things that Goldman Sachs did was um, bet heavily on the collapse of the U.S. mortgage market. They made $4 billion for themselves and their clients. That, that you know, and they not only bet on the collapse of the mortgage market, they made it collapse, and that was part of the deregulation game directed by Larry Summers. And then, by the way, they went out and hired him, paid him. Larry Summers is worth about thirty-seven million dollars. He's been paid millions and millions of dollars by the banks he was supposedly policing. I mean, if the imagine a police chief going to work, uh, you know, going to work for uh, the mob. This is, you know, this is the type of stuff that makes people feel ill about government. And it, you know, this is what Obama has decided to give us as head of the Federal Reserve Board. I don't think people realize that this isn't over. I mean, the, we had this terrible financial crisis that almost took down the whole financial system five years ago. But yet their government wants them to think that, oh, it's all been papered over, it's all been fixed, everything's hunky dory Looting the economy for their own personal benefit and creating a crisis. The government here in Northern Ireland has decided to spend over two million pounds on this bullshit. This fake...